Hello, everyone. Welcome to Parts Hold. I'm Christian Lafferty. This is Coach Cliff Honeycutt. And today, we're going to bring you an amazing episode. We're going to talk about being a master of your inventory. We're also going to discuss uh, Cliff's son and his desire to be a calendar model. And finally, we're going to talk about why Los Angeles is just the right place for him. That and much, much more coming up today on Parts Hold. Here to fill the order. Man, I gotta tell you, uh, that was a really interesting conversation I just hopped into. Oh, so, yeah? Well. Well, yeah. there's there's multiple ones here, but I'm gonna assume that you're talking about the one that I had with my son. The boots, Yeah. So that's really interesting. So let's just get an insight into the Honeycutt family. What happened? <laughs> Take it away. Um, so my son is serving in the Coast Guard and not going too much into what he's doing. But um, this week they're running a kind of, um, they're encamped and they're having someone run surveillance. What can we talk about what he's doing with the Coast Guard? Because that's um, really cool. Yeah, I don't know how much... I, I really don't know how much I can go in. Well, he's not really selected into the teams, but he's getting selected for... He got selected to go into uh, MSRT. Which okay, is, what's that? Uh, maritime uh, Rescue and Tactical Team that operates internationally. Is that like the Navy SEALs of the Coast Guard? Um, that's probably a good way to describe it. They yeah. operate kind of alongside of them, same base. Um, they're actually based down in um, Coronado and uh, on the East Coast as well. And so they also do things with the special forces from the army as well. So the army is actually the one doing this exercise. Um, and some so of it's them, like a joint effort kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of a it's a whole it's a whole kind of thing. If anybody knows anything about that out there, I probably misspoke a lot of that, but I think it's pretty. No close. one's going to fact check you. Right, I think it's pretty close. Uh, and he's in it and he's doing it. So uh, has but, he always been an overachiever? I mean, we operate like that. I mean, that's kind of the family. No. Um, He's always had a vision of what he wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, both, um, all three of mine, although my daughter's still in high school, but they, both my boys, since they're out of school, had a vision of what they wanted to do and they stuck to it. It's pretty, um, like, a, it's a proud dad moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they. Well, I mean, uh, your other son does an amazing, he did an, had an amazing uh, college football career. That's right. Right? Yep. And yep. then we've got another one in the Coast Guard. That's then, right. Uh, what's Brooklyn want to be when she grows up? A school teacher. As much as she hates school, she wants to be a school teacher. That's interesting. Yeah. It's pretty huh. funny. But um, so the conversation was he is in this camp. And so they've kind of set up a camp and then there's surveillance on it. 24-hour um, surveillance. And they're kind of doing things during the day. And um, I didn't even set my phone down so I can actually read the text. Oh, message. I can't wait for this. <laughs> so... Um, anyway, he, it's not so, um, covered up that he can't have his phone with him right now. Now in a couple of weeks, he will no longer have his phone with him and we won't have a whole lot of contact for at least a period of time. But, um, he started out saying next week's going to be boring. Um, and talks about his, uh, his kind of partner, um, is slurping soup out of a can. Okay. Kind of camping. So he can't handle the fact that he's going to be slurping soup. I can't say that I blame him there. Um, and then we, we, I'd gotten him a bunch of stuff, uh, maybe a couple of Christmases ago. And so he was telling me the tent that I had gotten him was too small, um, because he was too long. He said he was <laughs> coming out of it. But then he said, um, so they take photos of us as surveillance in the middle of the night. And he said, and I couldn't sleep. And so I walked out of my tent in my underwear and my boots, used a restroom, then walked around for a bit, put a dip in and stayed up until I got tired again. He said the chief told him this next morning that was the most redneck thing that he believes he's ever seen. Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah, I'm it pretty impressed. Yeah, well, we're representing North Carolina well. Yeah, there's. Uh, let's keep the stereotypes alive. That's what I say. <laughs> right, oh my sure, gosh, for, for sure. Maybe I should have come to L.A. that way. Uh, you know what the the one thing I would say about L.A. is it's super inclusive. Like the the it wouldn't even be the like if we saw your son out on Wilshire Boulevard 
in combat boots and his underwear, it wouldn't even be the weirdest thing we'd see. <laughs> well, no, that is that is factual. Well, hundred percent go there. So I like I like the inclusivity. Is like everybody can just kind of be themselves. So I welcome your son. Do you think uh, if he, I think it, he'd he'd be right at home? Do you think if he he pulled out a can of of Copenhagen, which in this scenario I don't know where he would get a can of Copenhagen from, but oh, I don't know if they sell that in the the. So that's what uh, I was going to ask. Soviet Socialist Republic of California. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, if, if he does like literally one can of the dip, it's funny that we keep talking about um, chewing kind of tobacco been, on episodes. It's like kind of been a theme lately. First off, it's terrible for, for you. Um, but I bet one canister of that stuff is seven hundred dollars. Oh, here I recently Plus was at tax. a store and a manager uh, had a whole sleeve that he had bought, and so I asked him how much it was. I think it was thirty dollars. It wasn't here in California. It was somewhere else. Uh, but I think it was thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, I'd find a new habit. Yeah, no way. Yeah, like uh, it, if it's one thing you are, it's you're conscious of what you're spending money on. <laughs> right. Probably to an ex- <laughs> to a fault that I'll spend the money on foolishness, but uh, we all do, I guess, in some levels. For sure, I have a shoe thing and a a coffee mug thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you remember how many coffee mugs I have now? Um, I think the one that I that I brought to you this week makes 39. Yeah, the best gift ever. Cliff brought me a coffee mug from the state of Mississippi, which I don't go to Mississippi every day. So well, I think... my Mississippians? Yeah, and, and our great clients that we have in Mississippi, oh, by fantastic. the way. So we actually have some really awesome clients like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, like all very well represented all the way to your home state of North Carolina. Yes, very much. So I love that whole Southern part of the country that's very well represented yeah. by our clientele. So yeah, um, that's, great that's super cool. So yeah, so today um, we're going to talk about being masters of the inventory, which is, if you guys remember back in the eighties, that was a, uh, that was a cartoon that was on television. There was like Castle Grayskull and he, I just recently watched the movie. I don't know if you know, there's a movie that was made about that. Like, I don't, I don't think more than seven people saw that movie. Right. You know, it was not good, but I recently was somewhere and it came on and it was as horrendous now as it was then. Yeah. So you saw the masters of the, of the inventory movie. (laughs) Yes, Masters of the Inventory movie. That's exactly what I saw. Yeah, or Masters of the Universe, one of the two. But um, you've got kind of a healthy list here. So I want to make sure that we kind of uh, unpack this. And you had said something in pre-production that kind of stuck out to me is is like, well, we're doing the basics. And I think that that's one of the things. I remember even there was somebody that put a... um, a comment on the YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. Like right when we started, it's like, will we ever get past the basics? Well, the funny thing is, is that believe it or not, when it comes to running a a parts department or almost any department, no matter what, you have to be really good at the basics. You can't be awesome at like the crazy stuff and not good at the basics because then you just open yourself up to a world of problems. So, so yeah, we're going to talk about basics because it all comes back to that, right? There's multiple things in my mind there. And you've heard it almost cliche that, you know, Michael Jordan threw how many free throws, you know, um, way more than you <laughs> No, he threw good ones. I do not. I, I wish talk about having video. I wish I had video <laughs> of you playing basketball. Oh, it just, doesn't even make sense to me. Like you're from North Carolina. Like you're from the same state that the wonderful, illustrious Michael Jordan's from. And you can't play basketball to save no. your life at all it's so impressive it looks like you've never even touched a basketball and i actually have decent height like i could have played and you're in great shape all that stuff like like <laughs> the, there was a uh, there was a mismatch for me there was like a cliff and basketball mismatch <laughs> the first time i saw him play basketball but give me some other um, sports i might get involved in it but basketball is, <laughs> but is, but like the rough, so this rough. is funny to me too because like maybe you're just not good at like the standard sports right because don't didn't you also get football <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah, like as a senior, like, didn't you get cut from your freshman football? I team? definitely got cut. Yeah. But you know, uh, then you just came to a list of uh, your name on the on the wall, and my name wasn't on there. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of the best stories I've ever heard. It was so strange, I but yeah, I also I like that my name on that there. it skipped a generation that you were terrible at football, but your son magically he's yeah, great. It, played and actually, college. both of them, uh, my middle one, um, had he been a better student, he could have played if he wanted. To. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's so. Good. We were just talking about this. My dad played baseball and he played basketball in high school, um, 
And so we were kind of talking about that the other the other day because so my boys. Are you good at? Um, I'm good at fishing. I I don't even know how to respond to that. Like when you say good at fishing, like how are you good at fishing? Are we talking about bobber fishing? <laughs> no, this isn't Morgan Wallen's Up Down. Yeah, Up Down. I love that song. That is a good song. Yeah. Um, no, I, th- I mean we fly fish. Fly fishing. Yeah. Okay, now that's a sport. Okay, yeah, we do. I'll we give do that to you. But yeah. um, and I can play. I can, I can play other sports. I mean baseball, football, whatever. Like, can you hit a ninety mile an hour fastball? Um. I don't know that I've ever attempted it, but I give it a shot. I have. It's coming fast. <laughs> yeah, that it yeah. is. That I, it I is. believe I foul tipped one at ninety. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, and there's other things. I, now I feel like I haven't got to defend myself. But anyway, no, the, just, just own it. The masters Be of you. the um, the masters of the inventory. Um, it is the basic stuff, but Chris off, often says um, all the time that little hinges swing big doors. And so that's kind of where this comes from, uh, that it's just the small things that are going to make the most impactful uh, movements on your... I thought you were going to go with uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Well, I think that could be... That would both apply both too, of right? those would apply here, for sure. For sure. Okay, cool. So, let's let's rock through this list. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to start out with anticipating sales. And I know that's probably... We're probably going to get a lot of heat uh, back on the uh, YouTube channel, possibly. Uh, but that's okay because I think you do have to anticipate sales and kind of pay attention to trends. It's not as prevalent now as it was years ago, but there's still a time to do AC work and that you need to be pay attention to AC. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So the seasonal stuff. Yeah. I mean, but you so got suspension a- components in winter. Well, North Carolina doesn't matter, but like up north, uh, suspension components in winter makes sense. Tires, yeah, and I've, probably. Got to, I've got to pay attention to that and the trends. Is there are certain things that within the traveling time frames when people are going on vacations, maybe I need to beef up my inventory and brake pads. Yeah. Um, whatever that I'm going to anticipate, but I need to anticipate some of the sales trends. I would even go far, and I'm probably going to catch some flack from my parts managers out there, but I'll probably get it um, accolades from the service managers out there. But I think parts managers need to anticipate sales on new model vehicle stuff, air filters oil filters, wipers, and those sorts of things. Some of the manufacturers used to send you a list of those things and say, these are, you need to stock this for the new model. But there's a handful of manufacturers that don't send you that list out there. Uh, But I I think you got to test that that. fear from the service side a couple of times when anytime I'd be like, oh, this is the first of these I've seen. I'm like, oh crap, we're not going to have an oil filter. How did you feel as an advisor when you were, when you're a writer? Nervous. (laughs) New model. Very nervous. Especially when the MPI came back. And there was stuff that was needed. I'm like, oh no, we're not gonna, we're gonna have one wiper blade in stock or something like that. And then, did you ever run into a situation where you you anticipated you not having it, but then you had it? I'm sure. I like to remember the times we didn't. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. But um, but definitely, there were times where uh, we had stuff that I was shocked. Yeah. So, but I like that anticipating the needs and seasonally and also model wise. Yeah. Uh, that's great. And that would fall right into number two is in focusing on those fast moving items. If we're talking about new model specifically, focusing on the air filters, the cabin filters, the oil filters, the wiper blades, it's the stuff that, that I don't want the customer to have to sit there and wait. And if they sit there and wait on something uh, like an air filter, they're getting it somewhere else. That's right. And I think the important thing to remember is, is that it's pretty easy to outfit, right? So for the first three to four, maybe even five visits, all you need is those parts. Right. Right. That's right. Yes. Oil filter, air filter, cabin filter, uh, wipers, and then maybe a set of brake pads, depending on the model. I but probably, that's literally, you can get through the first year or two of a product yeah. with four with yeah, four and main and I probably parts. would grab some lug nuts too. I've gone to some manufacturers oh, lately, okay. lately that's and the good. lug nuts have been absolute trash. Um, so, uh, focusing on the fast moving parts and then number three, kind of piggyback and we're just kind of layering it here. Um, I've got to be really cautious on that stuff that I don't, um, that I don't let it become obsolete. Yeah. So that really goes hand in hand with one, right? You have to anticipate what's going to happen, but you also have to be able to backstop it at the end and not let a part sit on the shelf for too long. You're right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Those uh, two are definitely related. Now the other, the other side of that coin is if um if i'm getting the fast move or the newest moving 
new model, fast moving stuff. I'll get it out here correctly. New model, fast moving stuff. They're prob I'm probably going to have to extend that out. So if I'm looking at my obsolete inventory at nine months, I may need to push that out for a year because maybe I'm not going to see those cars right away. Yeah, you don't have to order it the day the model comes out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Um, and then again, we're just kind of we're building a little a little cake, if you will. We're cooking. Yes. Are you getting hungry? Oh, actually, I am getting hungry. Yeah. Um, something that I have won in the past. I did win a cake decorating contest. Yeah. Did I tell you what happened when I went to uh, Texas a few weeks ago? No. So I went to Texas and I took a couple of the coaches out to dinner. Okay. And uh, what would you take if you're in Texas, right? We're San Antonio, Texas. And uh, and I'm like, I want the guys to have a really good experience. What would you take them out to eat? It would not be sushi. Okay. It would be barbecue. Yeah. We went for Italian. <laughs> oh, that makes perfect sense like italian barbecue no <laughs> no it's just straight italian yeah <laughs> and it was darn fine darn tootin' if you will in which town were you in san antonio texas <laughs> beautiful town it's tons awesome. of barbecue lots of tex-mex we had italian yeah that makes makes perfect sense to me yeah they made fun of me for it i actually think if if i remember correctly we were together in north dakota uh Probably I'd take you up for sushi. <laughs> probably a few years ago, and we went and had Mexican in North Dakota. Oh, yeah. Well, it was Monday nights, buy one, get one burrito. Right. <laughs> right. That's one, that's one thing you know. You yeah, like, so you know that about tra you travel too much when you know what the specials are in the different right. cities. So that's good. That's um, funny. Coach Matt actually uh, just uh, got introduced to the North Dakota world of bingo. Okay. When he went there, yeah, he, he lost both games he played. Um, so he's on probation right now. I can identify with being a loser. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and on the next episode, we'll dig into Cliff's psyche. Um, oh, my gosh. Um, but let's talk about uh, analyze. That would be my next uh, point there um, as we analyzed everything else. But I want to continue to analyze my inventory and keep a really, really good mix um, one of the greatest compliments I think as a parts manager you can hear is when someone says, well, I didn't expect you to have that. Oh, I would also think it's almost the reverse, but I would think that it'd be a great compliment for someone to say your inventory is clean. For sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, when you have it on the shelf and they don't expect it, it's a pretty cool look on someone's face. Yeah. And I think those parts managers that are controlling their obsolescence and continually analyzing their inventory for trends and all those things, um, that's th those are the guys that have the stuff, the obscure stuff um, that maybe the technician or the wholesale customer or even the retail customer wasn't expecting them to have. Great. I dig it. All right. Let's continue to go on. And the next two kind of go hand in hand, uh, but I want to constantly be looking at my history. The next three. No. Uh, well, the understand, yeah, at least the next two. Yeah. I want to look at my history, and I want to understand my inventory. And I also, from an understanding point, I'm also putting in there, I want to understand my customer. Okay. So, again, if we're talking about sales trends, do my clients drive a lot? I know where I'm at. We know the areas and the times that people are, are traveling uh, May and June are going to be big months for uh Yeah, because as soon as the there. kids get out of school is when they go, right? Absolutely. Now, did that... So in North Carolina, do a lot of people do the road trip in the summer? Yeah. 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 I mean, you got to figure the mountains are a couple hours away from where I'm at, uh, and the beach is exactly three hours. When I was in uh, when I was in Illinois, it was absolutely... June was the month that everybody went to Florida. They drove. And yeah. It's a, like a 24-hour drive, but... We it, was, it felt like we had the same people in every year doing their at that same uh, time frame. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think the really great parts managers are looking at that and looking at their history and trying to remember what they were selling at that time. Um, used That's to be something that a report wouldn't really tell you that well, right? I don't think I don't. I think well, I think if you're running the report in the right time frame, I think you're going to look at your sales history. But I think you've got to be. I think you really got to be in tune with your in inventory and be analyzing it yeah. on a, on a with your inner inventory with my what. Your inner inventory? My inner inventory, yes. Uh, the Michigan folks are all traveling in the winter. I have found that out for the Mich Michigan oh, that's folks out there. I wouldn't guess that. Uh, they want to get out of there. 
They want nothing to do with the winters up there. Right. And I can respect that as a yeah. guy who doesn't like cold weather. For sure. All right. Uh, and then sales activity is, is another one. That, again, as you stated, those three kind of go uh, together. Uh, but I want to understand my sales activity. I would think of it even um, analyzing um, my customers from a sales activity for my wholesale customers. Great. All right. And then the last one is a big key for me personally um, because I know that I failed at it in some areas. And when I did, it really opened up uh, um, a lot of issues. But when we were really good at it. Issues you still have right now. (laughs) When we were really good at it, um, it makes life so much simpler. And that's communication. Probably the uh, probably the unsung hero of parts departments are the ones that communicate, right? Yeah. The best ones are always really good internally and externally. I love seeing parts counter people walking around and telling people about parts mm-hmm. or delivering parts in some stores uh, into the shop. Um, I love seeing some parts managers in morning meetings with the service departments and being involved in that. Better yet, when they run the morning meeting is really cool. Well, now you might be pushing it there. But yeah, I don't know. I've seen it happen yet. a couple no, of I would love it. Um, I love when they're involved in it and they're wanting to be involved in it uh, because they're constantly communicating and wanting to get better. Yeah, great. I dig it. Well, that was a heck of a list right there. So masters of the inventory and then just go through our bullet points one more time. So let's go through uh, anticipating sales, focus on fast moving, identifying obsolete parts, constantly analyzing constantly understanding, reviewing history and sales trends and sales activity. And the last piece of the puzzle is communication. Communication solves a lot of problems. So uh, that's a great list. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time on Parts Hold. Here to fill the order.